Hi, this is Greg with Flying Quest Fitness. Today we're going to talk about the bug out firearm and a bug out bag. So let's talk about it. Now a bug out bag can be a lot of different things to a lot of different people pertaining to a lot of different situations. Alright, for me in particular, I look at it as a get home bag. You know, what if? You know, a lot of people don't remember the time where we did not have cell phones where if uh, you got stranded in the wrong neighborhood because your car broke down or if you uh, had a breakdown on a long stretch of rural highway that uh, and you were in trouble. You had a long walk sometimes through hostile territory, so to speak. Now, unfortunately, in today's times, if you're in an urban setting, you might have to worry about flash mobs being in the wrong place at the wrong time. And what I look at a uh, bug out bag for is something to get me out of trouble and get me back home. And I also believe in keeping it simple. Now everybody, when they think about a bug out bag, they think about the bug out gun, which might not necessarily be the most important thing. All right, let's see what we have in the bag here. Got a Taurus G2C in a to-go uh, slide holster that my friend, the Scottish American gave me a couple of years back. Holds 12 rounds. Now, this is an earlier version of the G3, and it has a loaded round indicator, which they did away with. Also has adjustments for windage and elevation. You know, these are all features I like, as well as uh, safety. This gun was affordable. It, uh, it's been very accurate. It's been very dependable. You know, I've shot hundreds of rounds through it. It's also a gun that could be replaced easily if something were to happen to it. And I do not recommend leaving guns in vehicles overnight because this is how they get stolen. This is how criminals get their hands on guns. Rather than keep your gun in a, a, a bug out bag, you could actually keep it in a lock box that was secured in some way to your vehicle. Now that's no guarantee that it won't get stolen, but it might make it a little bit harder. I really do not like keeping guns uh, unaccompanied by the owner in a vehicle, but sometimes you have to. Now normally, you know, I'm gonna be pocket carrying a five or six shot revolver, either a Smith & Wesson, a Ruger, you know, sometimes a Taurus. So this is a backup. This is something that I can keep with me that if I'm in a bad situation, you know, I can put it on my side and then I've got my bug out bag with uh, some emergency equipment. Now before we get started, let me offer a disclaimer. You know, I'm not some uh, great uh, medical expert or paramedic you know i am emt certified i do run calls uh, with a local volunteer fire department you know i have been a first aid and cpr instructor for almost two decades i've been a first responder instructor i am an emergency uh, medical responder instructor i'm also uh, an instructor in the cert program the community emergency response team training through uh, FEMA. So when we look at uh, some emergency equipment, and especially emergency medical equipment, we need to think about several things. And that is, we need to concentrate on the three killers. And that means keeping things very simple. So when we look at our bag here, you know, one of the things that we have is things to stop bleeding like just an ordinary dressing 
an ordinary dressing, ordinary bandage. Compression, wrap the bandage around the dressing. If that doesn't stop the bleeding, you know, there are a lot of commercially made tourniquets, but never forget that a tourniquet can be just as simple as a bandana, a stick to wind it around, and then something to tie it in place. So you've got bleeding, stopping bleeding. Now, this is just a simple CPR mask uh, for giving ventilations. All right, airway. Uh, tilting the head, providing ventilations. That's the uh, other killer. And last but not least, well, let's see, we also have some small roller bandages and uh, these could be used to pack a wound on the torso. And we do have uh, medical gloves, but we also have an emergency blanket because the third killer is shock. You know, people go into shock when blood's not going to the vital organs of the body. And one of the things you want to do is to try to keep them warm. Now in my bag, and I believe in keeping things very, very simple, I have a knife as a tool, not a defensive item. And this is a uh, Mora Niv made in Sweden. They're very good camp knives, very sturdy. Hey, this is something else that uh, the Scottish American had sent me several years ago. And while I usually have a flashlight on my side, it doesn't hurt to have a backup. KISS principle. Keep it simple, stupid. So your three killers, bleeding, shock, and airway. That's the three things you have to look out for. All right, now that you could uh, have a much more advanced bug out kit with more advanced medical equipment. And if you're interested in that, there's a channel called Skinny Medic that I highly recommend. And the guy that does that channel, he and I occasionally cross paths professionally. I've actually had some training under him, and I highly recommend that channel. So you tell me, what things are you going to put in a bug out bag? Uh, what type of firearm do you think would make an ideal bug out gun? Let's do a little more shooting. And this is Greg with Lion Quest Fitness.